So hip abduction, we're looking at obviously the relationship between the hip adductors and the hip abductors. So we're talking specifically about adductor magnus and glute medius. So the process of this is about working the adductor magnus to also treat the glute medius. Okay, so the glute medius becomes inhibited because of the increased tension and load through this adductor magnus, and they are antagonists and agonists to each other. So this is really, really important. I'm not gonna tell you how important the glute medius is, especially for our runners, because it's our main hip stabilizer as we run through. So it is absolutely important imperative that we look and try and assess what sort of restrictions we have in the hip adductors. Okay, now the simple process of this is that we can take our clients just through a little bit of passive range of movement for their hip adduction just to see where they feel it. Now sometimes they might feel it out here, but most of the time they're going to feel it here and the adduction area. Okay, now 95% of the time I tend to find adductor magnus is our main restrictor. Okay, so that's the area that we target. But sometimes you will find it is actually adductor longus. So I would say as you're going through your testing, test it two or three times just to get an idea of where it is. Okay, so a little bit of anatomy just so we all know where we're working and what we're doing here. You'll see the main muscle here. If I push that up through there like that and expose, that is our adductor longus muscle. Okay, we addressing the adductor magnus is going to be below that area. So we're in this area here, okay? If we come down medially, then obviously we're picking up the hamstrings. And there is some debate that the adductor magnus sometimes acts as a medial hamstring. But for us, we're obviously using this adductor magnus to treat our glute medius. And I know that sounds bizarre, but when we're looking at these holding patterns, this is how these antagonist and agonist relationships work. So we're looking at offloading the antagonist to help the agonist. Right, so the technique itself is quite simple. We have a couple of trigger points up high in the adductor magnus, okay? And then we also have here, but this is not necessarily about treating those areas, okay? What we're actually looking at trying to do is improve the range of movement and take the tension out of the adductor magnus. Now we will focus a little bit on the trigger points, but it's not the focus, not like it was with the anterior hip. So I'll show you a little bit of how we do this release technique and it takes a little bit of practice to learn it. So once again, you can see the setup here. If you can, you can get your clients into this position here with a bit of hip flexion, 90 degrees knee flexion, and get them to rest their foot just basically almost on your TFL, okay? You're gonna support at the back of the knee as well and make sure that there's no pinching in the back of their hip as well, all right? So we use a little bit of cream. Obviously, I'm using the Premax, and this is the cream, not the lotion, because we're looking at targeting specific areas. So really, let's just put some broad pressure through first, through this area, just so that our clients are used to this area. Make sure that they're draped, okay? It's really important, the modesty of your clients, especially with either your athletes or just the general public for that matter. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to explore a little bit of this range of movement as we go in and work the adductor magnus itself. Okay, so I'm going to come in, the choice of tool will be a fist, but a really loose type of a fist. So don't go in like this because that will be just too aggressive. So let's soften your hand off a little bit, okay, so that you can sort of blend into the tissue. So I'm going to drop down so that I'm underneath that adductor magnus, uh, that longus, and I'm approaching the adductor magnus. So I just slowly work along the length of that tissue. And as you can see, I'm just going to bring up a little bit of hip flexion and at the same time a little bit of hip abduction as well. But not forcing it, just working very, very slow and very purposeful. If you rush this technique, then they're gonna push against you and you will not get the release that you were. So just slowly working up, okay? And as I come to this area where the trigger points are, that's where you'll feel the most restriction. So we just sit in there and just work up and down, feel for that to just open up and free up like so, okay? Come back again, repeat the process. So normally I take maybe three to four treatments. Um, depending on your clients and how often you've seen them, then obviously you'll find once they're used to having this work done and you get the release work, then you probably only need to do it once or twice, 
Okay, so once again, set up, make sure that they're comfortable, there's no pinching in the back here, and also working through the tissue. Okay, so feeling for any of those restrictions, making sure that it's even and it's purposeful. All right.